I'm using this medium to call upon the Registrar of the Barbados Supreme Court Complex to re-examine the dress code which obtains for visitors to that facility. I traveled there today, September 24th, 2019. I arrived at approximately 10 minutes to 3 p.m. I had uh, important business to transact within the registration department. I was made aware that there is a dress code policy in effect at the court office, at the registration office. In principle, I am not against the establishment of a dress code policy. I can understand why the authorities may want to enforce some form of dress code by which members of the public should abide. I can understand that in principle. But what I experienced today was a clear example of discrimination between what is enforced for women and what is enforced for men visiting the court complex. I came there attired, in my opinion, very professionally. I was well attired. I had actually come from work when I appeared at the checkpoint in a long formal dress locks and a button-down shirt, the shirt that I have on right now, because I came straight to my desk and I thought I will share this experience. So this shirt that I have on now is actually a button-down shirt. It is worn like a shirt jack. Today I opted to dress with some black formal wear shoes, socks, a long slacks, and my button-down shirt. Business attire, I would say. When I appeared at the checkpoint, I declared my possessions so that they can be scanned. On the way to entering the building, to proceed to the department where I was conducting business. And I was told prior to going through the scanners that I needed to tuck in my shirt. I indicated to the security guard at the time, one of two, that this shirt is not a shirt that is usually worn tuck in that it is worn like a shirt jack and therefore I would like it to be treated like a shirt jack which is worn on the outside. She insisted that I tuck in my shirt. I again restated what I said earlier. As that was happening that to and fro between myself and the one of two security officers women were coming in dressed very casually i noticed one lady who passed me as i was interacting with one of the two security officers she had on an orange polo shirt it was not tucked into the pants which she was wearing. She had on slippers. 
but yet she was allowed to proceed through the scanner to the area where she was conducting business. I drew the attention of the security guard there at the time that here it is that you have another client coming into the building who happens to be female. Her shirt is not tucked in, but yet she's allowed to go through the security scanners and proceed to the area where she's conducting business. And here I am, a male with a dress shirt on, a button-down dress shirt on, which fits outside of my pants, and you are demanding that I tuck in my shirt. I said to her, certainly that cannot be fair. And therefore, I am not tucking in my shirt because that is not how I have chosen to wear the shirt. And from what I saw with the other client coming into the building just now, you're not being fear. And I indicated to her that clearly she can use her discretion and allow me to proceed to the registration department to which I have come to conduct business. Now clearly she wasn't having me go through the scanner. She wasn't having me enter the building any further than the point at which I was at the time. And I asked her why. Why is it that I, though very neatly attired, though very professionally attired, long pants, socks and shoes enclosed clean no armholes and because i have a shirt on that does not tuck into the pants you are insisting that i tuck it in her response to me was that that's the rules of the court and she's enforcing the rules of the court She further goes on to say that unless my shirt has on the bottom sides two slits, which in her opinion defines a shirt jack, which in her opinion defines a shirt which should be worn on the outside, unless my shirt fits that description I would have to tuck in my shirt and I said no but I do not understand what impact my button-down shirt jack though it does not have the two slips at the side according to her which defines what a shirt jack to be worn on the outside should look like That in the absence of that, I would have to tuck my shirt in. I have a problem with that and I refused to tuck my shirt in because I felt discriminated against. Because there were women coming into the court complex with blouses out, with polo shirts on, not tucked in, and they are allowed to proceed to their destination within the building. And I as a male, because I'm a male, in your opinion, and according to you, based on the rules for dress governing men, I will have to tuck in my shirt. I refuse to do so. I insisted that I speak with the next person in command above her to share my dissatisfaction with how I was treated. She insisted that I would have had to exit the building and walk around to look for her senior who is in some other area of the court complex. And I refused to do that. 
She then drew reference to the registrar of the Supreme Court who sets the dress code. I asked for the name of the registrar. I asked to see the registrar and uh, she refused. In fact, she refused. And uh, while this was happening, her colleague, her co-security guard colleague, is saying to her that she's talking too much. She's wasting her time and insisting that I have to exit the building if it is that I don't want to comply with the dress code. My problem is, one, there cannot be a dress code for men and a dress code for women, whereby one is given more of a relaxed treatment, that is females, and the other is given more of a stringent treatment. I have a problem with that. I recognize that it made no sense arguing or protesting with the two security guards because in all fairness, they are simply just enforcing what they were told to enforce by the authorities of the court system. So I cannot really fuss with those two agents. But I would say I found them to be quite discourteous, quite rough, and uh, not willing to use their discretion. Their level of customer service was extremely poor. And uh, as I stood firm on my refusal to tuck my shirt in, they became even more agitated and insisted that if I cannot comply with tucking in my shirt, I will need to step out of the building. Up until that point, I did not see the registrar of the Supreme Court complex to share my dissatisfaction and the lack of discretion being exercised by the security agents. It appeared to me that the agents did not know who the registrar of the Supreme Court is because they were fumbling. I eventually exited the building. And while exiting the building, I turned and I saw the dress code sign on the outside and this dress code reads as follows to all persons conducting business in the courts and registration department all persons conducting business in the courts the precincts of the courts or within the various sections of this department should be dressed appropriately below which is listed what is expected. Nine points. One, no strap blouses or dresses with straps. No back out or belly out. Three, no mini skirts. No halter tops. No revealing tops or splits. No shorts, no jeans, no slippers, no curlers. Number nine, for men, no ear or body rings. 
No shorts and shirts must be neatly tucked into trousers. I'll read number nine again. For men, no ear or body rings. Note, for men, no ear or body rings. No shorts and shirts must be worn neatly tucked into trousers. Full stop. Please also note that all cell phones must be turned off when entering the building. And it goes on to say, thank you for your cooperation. Registrar of the Supreme Court, dated May 2nd, 2008. This is 2019. More than 11 years ago since this sign detailing the dress code was updated and published. I have a problem. I have a problem not in principle with a dress code, but I have a problem with the discrimination against men as opposed to women. Men should not wear ear or body rings, yet Women are allowed to wear ear and body rings. In an era where it has been culturally accepted as the norm for males to adorn themselves with earrings in both ear. In all places, even in workplaces, in the public service, I can see men, employees, who adorn themselves with earrings. But this policy dictates that men should not wear ear or body rings. But women are allowed to wear ear, earrings, and body rings. Men are not allowed to wear earrings or body rings. No shorts. Women are allowed to wear skirts. That is, short skirts. Shirts must be neatly tucked in for men. Women can wear a blouse and it does not have to be tucked in, regardless. But a man appearing at the same time as a female with a blouse which is not tucked in, the man with his shirt, similarly to mine, a button-down shirt, a shirt jack, is being instructed to tuck his shirt jack in, contrary to how he chooses to wear that article of clothing. My question is, given how I was dressed today, very neatly, very professionally, long slacks, socks and enclosed shoes, a button down shirt, no armhole, given how I was dressed, given I was wearing a shirt not up in, as was my choice to do. How does my not tuck in affect the operation of the Barbados Supreme Court complex? What injury does the shirt that I was wearing not tuck in do to the staff at the complex, to the operation at the complex? What is there to gain by insisting that I tuck in my shirt while women coming in at the same time as me with polo shirts not tucked in, slippers and jeans pants are allowed to proceed? Where is the fairness in that? I have a problem with that lack of discretion. I have a problem with that aspect of the dress code. And I am therefore calling on the registrar of the Barbados Supreme Court complex, given my experience, to re-examine this dress code that is in force and to consider that there is a degree of discrimination against men and how they are attired when compared to women 
The time has come for a re-examination and a relax of the dress code to some extent. Yes, I understand. I accept. There is reason for a dress code. I understand that. People need to be protected from themselves. People need to be taught how to respect the business of the court and the business of government offices via the way they dress. I understand that. But asking a man who otherwise is professionally attired, neatly attired, with a shirt jack, a button-down shirt, insisting that he tuck his shirt in, smacks discrimination, in my opinion. And that has to stop. And I'm convinced that I'm not the only one who holds this view. I'm sure there are other men, other persons like me, who may have had similar experiences attempting to transact business at the court system, but being denied access because in the opinion of the security agents at the door, the man's shirt needs to be tucked in the time has come for a re-examination of this dress code policy in an effort to erase the possibility of discrimination stepping in and i'm calling respectfully so on the registrar of our court complex here in Bridgetown, Barbados, White Park Road, to re examine this policy. Something is wrong, and after over 10 years. Given the heat that we experience today, given the climate within which we operate, given the heat wave that Barbados experienced this week, to in the 21st century be insisting that women cover their arms that women should not wear armholes when entering the building, in my opinion, is a backward policy. Because women are not allowed to enter the court complex with sleeveless tops on. I can understand the bar against a spaghetti strap top. I can understand the bar against that. But I cannot understand why within the climate within which we operate, the heat that government officials and authorities are insisting that women cover their arms, women not wear armholes. We need to do better than this. We need to do better than this. And I'm using this medium to share this experience and to request that this code be re-examined. And I will write to that effect to the Registrar of the Supreme Court formally indicating the experience that I had. And perhaps putting in place some degree of courtesy training, some degree of discretion training 
for the security agents that work at the door. Because other than the fact that my shirt is a shirt that is worn on the outside and not tucked in, I was professionally attired, decently attired, ready to do serious business with the department. But I was denied access. Because in the opinion of the agents, my shirt needed to be tucked in. Well, I'll tell you what. I am not one to be easily bullied. And I believe in standing up for something. And I choose to stand up for something. I came there dressed the way I choose to dress, respectfully. And I will not rumple my shirt by tucking it into my pants, contrary to how I choose to wear it. To satisfy what I call a backward rule of the Supreme Court complex. I refused and I will continue to refuse unless I left home with a tucked in shirt. I chose to walk away from the building because I will not be subjected to such discriminatory requests. And those of you who feel the same way that I feel watching this vlog or reading the subsequent article that I intend to pen, those of you who feel as strongly as I do or close as strongly as I do, share your comments in solidarity. Because sometimes it takes one person, one person to stand up and say no this is wrong no this is discrimination and if that one person is me well then so let it be so let it be join me my friends in calling on the registrar of the Barbados Supreme Court complex to re-examine the current dress code policy which is being enforced at the building which has not been updated since based on the date on the sign on the outside of the building since May 2nd, 2008 and given the climatic conditions and given the evidence of discrimination against men when compared to women it is time that rules like these, backward rules like these, nonsensical rules like these, be abandoned. That is my view.